DC Comics. Also, we're the Batman Company people. Batman. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Rhyming narration, which as you will see, will be our own sin next month. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Movie about British Revolution opens with American actress pretending to be British. This is gonna go over just about as well as Bridget Jones, isn't it? Guy Fox looks an awful lot like Jesus. Hey, wait a second. Natalie Portman isn't my actual girlfriend in this scene. A yellow-coated curfew is now in You had a date and lost track of time so badly that you forgot to leave for it until after curfew? I know women take a long time to get ready, but Jesus. Hey, Dark Knight, Dark Street, Dark Stranger, better go down this alley. Don't touch me! I don't know about the rest of you, but I would probably be pretty liberal with the pepper spray once two scary dudes threaten me. But Evie is way too nice to unleash the fury for some reason. Look, Willie, Kitty's got claws. That's racist. Boss, son up, if you're not the sorriest piece of ass in all of London, then you'll certainly be the sorest. Curfew cops are, by default, also rapists. The multiplying villainies of nature do swarm upon him. You know, the movie did take time to show us that V and Evie left at the same time from their apartments, so the timing isn't so coincidental, but London is a huge-ass place, so even if there's a smidge of coincidence here, it's worth sinning. The movie opens with a scene where V is basically Batman protecting innocent civilians in alleys at night. But then the entire rest of the movie will go to great lengths to show he's only motivated by his own selfish revolutionary agenda, and not a nightly vigilante protecting the innocent. Evie is, in fact, the only innocent person he saves this entire film. Quite the coincidence, considering how much he factors into the ending. In view, a humble vaudevillian veteran, cast vicariously as both victim and villain. Movie works every V-word known to man into this speech except vagina. Also, anti-hero arrives and alliterates annoyingly to authenticate aptitude at alliteration. Foro? It means that I, like God, do not play with dice and do not believe in coincidence. Writers almost always write something like this when it comes to coincidences like this. I promise you it'll be like nothing you've ever seen, and afterwards you'll return home safely. What? Even if you're a crazy person in a mask, all you need to get a girl to go out with you is confidence. This sign shows curfew begins at 10.30, and Evie didn't even leave her house for her supposed date until 11 p.m. What a stupid human. Hey, we're terrified of our oppressive government, and there's a scary rapey curfew. But there's music playing, so let's all go outside. I guess it's a good thing there's a curfew, and only rapists will be killed by this building's demise. There might be other stray Natalie Portmans walking around too, but they knew about the curfew. And even the fireworks from an exploding building form into a V? This movie has a fetish. Today's 1984-style villain will be played by John Hurt, who actually was in the movie 1984, back in the year... Well, I can't remember. This is probably not a coincidence, if this screenplay is to be believed. Okay, so this London society has cameras everywhere. The government knew Evie was with V last night. They knew she was captured by Fingerman just before that. Why haven't they already traced her steps all the way back to her apartment? Also, I guess after V destroyed the Bailey, he walked Evie home back through the dark alleys without running into any more Fingerman, and they didn't say another word to each other. You went to see Daddy Dietrich, didn't you? Yes, at 11 p.m., for some reason. Lead on a girl. You mean someone took the five minutes necessary to watch the surveillance cameras? I don't recall ever getting stood up by a more attractive woman. Well, maybe you should schedule dates to begin before curfew, huh? <laughs> Only eight hours late, fellas. Gotcha. Only eight hours late, fellas. Also, how did they ID Evie from what was obviously grainy surveillance cam footage without finding out her job in the process? What kind of big brother government is this? Also, gotcha. that employment ID card clearly says void on it. So even though you're ultimately lucky that she does actually work there, you are a shitty detective. What possible television show that the uber conservative chancellor would allow are these freaking skimpy flamingo dancers preparing for? The director said, let's put an apple under one of these monitors so someone looks like more of an asshole. Oh, now I see why it took so long for them to find Evie. It's so that they would arrive too late at her workplace, which just so happens to be under attack by V right now. Bullshit hiding spot actually works. London's government in 20, 20 whatever year this is must also have a stake in JVZ televisions. Also, this is odd product placement, right? Your TVs are in a movie about a fascist government, and in a big scene they show static? Did some other TV company pay to have JVC TVs in this instead of their own? Damn, this family f***ing loves them some alcohol. There is something terribly wrong with this country, isn't there? Movie dialogue doubles as honest assessment of America and pretty much every country in existence. Except Canada. They got figured out. Cameras. Your submission. We need cameras. This is the exact line that caused my first college girlfriend to break up with me. Cover the exits. You aren't doing that already? Damn, I feel like this is a character who should be a lot smarter than this. Why isn't he smarter than this? Get anyone not wearing a mask out of here. Who besides police officers fit that description? Are you including the two people you just unmasked? And why do people without a mask get to leave? Why are they above suspicion? Does the order get everyone not wearing masks out of here include people with masks? Don't shoot me, please! It's him! It's him! All 526 cops fall for this. Also, did every single officer come out with these two guys? Are there not any officers still in the room who can help out? Also, don't all cops have a pair of handcuffs? Why aren't the masked people in handcuffs? What kind of fascist society is this anyway? These cops are all fired. 
Oh, oh never mind. Here we go. Green wire or red wire cliche. I did it. Good job, guy who obviously lucked out by way of screenwriting. We were here before you even got started. So you're saying that not only is it a pretty huge coincidence for V to meet Evie in the alley in the first place, but also that he just so happens to attack the television station where Evie works, mind you, at a time when she's in the building and ultimately in the same f***ing hallway? Jeez, is everybody still in the exact same place they were during V's broadcast? What's he thinking? Is he considering leaving her? Weren't there cops outside the building? Didn't Finch tell this guy to cover the exits? How did V get out? Or are they saying that Finch told this one dude to cover all the exits? Either way, it's simple as shit. Also, let's not forget V had to carry Evie out of this building without anyone seeing him and basically stroll through London in broad daylight carrying an unconscious girl who was hot as fuck. Director had obvious disagreement with the prop master over the definition of enough books. I picked you up and carried you to the only place I knew you'd be safe. Here. Yeah. My home. By an intricate series of secret passageways and tunnels unspoiled by London's Big Brother camera network, I guess. We'll never know. Somehow the description of V as a terrorist is a major detail in cracking this case. The girl from Ipanema cliche. Your hands. Yes. Why is it better or easier for you to cook this egg toast stuff without your gloves on? You left your mask and everything else on, so seems like the only reason is so that Evie and the audience can spot your burns. Oh, director had another obvious disagreement with the prop master over the definition of enough whack-ass drugs in this medicine cabinet. So the elevator takes him up to the important floor and lets him off before any security mechanism requires him to wave a pass? Also, wait, Evie has clearance to some rich asshole's penthouse at the BTN? Also, BTN didn't feel the need to update their security so stuff like this couldn't happen? He's done? Well, that's the kind of shower I call completely pointless. We got any eyes or ears on this one? That nah, cam goes with cut. All of them. Everywhere around London. There are no more cameras anywhere we can check for this guy. Have we got an elevator log ID? Yeah, I can't believe it either. The mailroom chick can waltz up to the voice of London's apartment anytime she damn well pleases. Let me guess. She's in deep, Inspector. Or he stole her ID badge. I mean, you believe this man to be a terrorist, right? It makes no sense that they just assume Evie is in on it. They? What an asshole. This is the asshole's alarm clock right here. Fake, loud-ass sword fighting while a hot girl is sleeping? But it made me feel sorry for Mercedes. Why? Because he cared more about revenge than he did about her. Irony. V keeps his TV tuned to the news so that when the movie ends, Evie can find out about Prothero's death. Mom gets killed or captured while the child hides under the bed cliche. The highest paid person at the camp was a priest. He's paid almost 200 grand a month. 200 grand a month?! this YouTube shit. I'm becoming a priest. It was rather my final remittance that I was interested in. My last little joy. You can't have a corrupt priest character unless he has sickening sexual appetites. They've sent a new girl who I'm afraid is a little older than usual. Even forgetting that V somehow figured out this bishop's exact awful clandestine awful underage awfulness and was able to change the order? This entire plan rides on a too old Evie passing the test even though the priest's tastes run a lot younger. Your grace. I love the confessional game. Tell me your sins. Anywhere but here, where the heart is. The Star Wars prequels. No strings attached. Those Thor movies. Is this gun hiding in a Bible inside the bishop's bedroom because he frequently needs to dispose of underage sex slaves? Or because the movie's plot needed it? Also, he point blank misses. Anyone with a gun like this carved out in a Bible has better aim than this. I'm sorry, but Evie, you're dressed like a China doll hooker. The driver of the van definitely saw you. His loyalty is not in question. But mine is. Your mother was Irish, wasn't she? That's racist. Movie expects me to believe Evie got from the huge church crime scene all the way to this dude's house in that f***ing outfit without being noticed. You wear a mask for so long you forget who you were beneath it. Do you intimately know someone else that might describe? Nah, probably not. Camera lingers on probably guilty person way too long. My god, he's killed them all. All but one. Who is she? Not sure. She could be that coroner who started as a botanist and knew exactly what V's flower was. Someone with such mysterious origins might be my first guess. Weird, she was just in the last scene. Kinda came out of nowhere. Lark Hill Detention Center Archive recorded everyone's picture except the lady doctor, because people who compile archives have a sense of drama. Dr. Diana Stanton changed the name Adelia Surridge. The same initials. What a strange coincidence. I should be given one today. There are no coincidences, Delia. Only the illusion of coincidence. Strange those words keep coming up every time an insane coincidence happens. Kind of, dare I say, convenient? Is it meaningless to apologize? Never. Yeah, tell that to Pete Rose. Didn't Finch talk to her during the daytime, at her workplace? Didn't he immediately get a call from his partner about the Lark Hill file? Didn't they get an answer about Diana Stanton changing her name, like, right after that? Why is it midnight now? Also, how does V know that Diana changed her name? Does he know people inside the registry? You would do well, Inspector, to put it out of your mind. Unfollowable orders. My first batch of subjects arrived today. Previously, before V had his vendetta. November the 5th. 
wow, how nice for V that his own personal tragedy happened on the same day as the Guy Fox tragedy, giving him the perfect costume and target date for his little rebellion. We call it Eggy in the Basket. My mum used to make them. This is weird. Movie continues to lay on the coincidences nice and thick. So much so that in this world, coincidences shouldn't even be considered weird or out of the ordinary or something even worth mentioning. Again, how does this all-controlling chancellor have no way to track what this inspector is doing with his time directly after being told to drop this line of inquiry? What? He's got to use a debugging device to make sure the chancellor doesn't hear this conversation, but he's been free to surf whatever the f*** he wants on the web? Get out of here, screenwriter. Satire. Oh, wait. Also, this is a ridiculous miscalculation by Dietrich. London is on edge with a terrorist running around. People within the party are getting killed. He's harboring a fugitive in his house, and he thinks the worst that's going to happen is he'll need to apologize? Why take the risk? The Chancellor's watching this broadcast. This is him with the milk glass. So, my question is, why does he let this show continue airing any further past this point? Is he like, well, it's possible this will be flattering to me, so I'll let this play out? He does have control over the airwaves, right? V had to come in with bombs and smoke and knives to get his unapproved video aired. How the hell did Stephen Fry manage to do it? I love this movie, but it makes no goddamn sense sometimes. Quickly, V, hide! Coincid irony. Okay, so they're taking him away. It's the middle of the night. Is Evie really concerned that they're going to immediately start searching the house for other people they don't think are there? Or start cataloging the dude's possessions? Why is she moving? I realize the plot needs her to, but still, wouldn't most people just shit their pants and stay put? No one who black bags for a living notices this shit. I'll be damned. They are hanging around looking around the house. But why with flashlights? You have the homeowner subdued. Turn on the actual lights, man. The hell? Yeah, no, her legs are broken. And probably her spine, too. V will later say he's doing this for her own good, and for some damn reason she eventually agrees with him. But honestly, this is a f***ed up thing to do to a person when you're the hero of the movie. F even if you're the bad guy. This is actual torture. He basically brainwashes her to believe the way he wants her to, and morally, the movie is absolutely okay with that. And I am not okay with that. Her name was Sarah. It was her wrists. They were beautiful. I think you underrated her shins, though. And in 2015, I starred in my first film. The Salt Flats. It didn't make any money because it was a historical film about scrubbing laundry. It wasn't long till they came for me. Honestly, why did it take them that long? You cut my hair? Yeah, but it looks good, girl. Trust me. You tortured me. You tortured me. He did. Now make sure you stop being mad about it once you cry a bit and it starts raining. <laughs> Main character has surprise asthma cliche. There's a lift. It'll take us to the roof. Oh, what a surprise. Our main character is in turmoil and it's raining outside. Andy crawled to freedom through 500 yards of f smelling foulness. Oh, wait. I thought about keeping this, but didn't seem right knowing you wrote it. I didn't. It's kind of hard to believe that the worldly Evie didn't know that this movie existed. It was 2015 and she was 11 when this movie came out. But after losing Best Picture to Fifty Shades of Grey, I guess it was tough to remember. May I show you something before you go? A super obvious shrine that you surely would have seen in your earlier days spent cooped up in this place. I want to kiss your mask, but I feel weird about it, face. I'm going to give it the old college try here for a second and see if I can manage to feel sorry for the guy losing the girl he intentionally tortured. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't. Civil War continues to devastate. Jeez, what would the second Civil War be about? I'm going to guess something dumb, like an SEC team losing to a Pac-10 team in college football, or a blown call or something. Or being a country divided over the new Taylor Swift album. Bloody coincidences are making me sick to my stomach. You and me both, pal. This story about terrorism at a tube station is actually about multiculturalism. Both the left and main center articles in this paper are, despite their headlines, the exact same multiculturalism article from before. And the far right article about sprayers causing damage is actually an article about the London Mathematics Society. 80,000 dead. And this f***ing article is about f***ing rice. Where is she? She left V's place and now has pretty much nowhere to go, right? What the f*** is this place? The BFC, supposedly the main or only parcel carrier in this version of England, somehow took hundreds of thousands of parcels on one day, all from the same source, without thinking it was strange or alerting anyone in a government office. Terrible alcoholism in this family was probably solved when daughter said, I learned it from watching you. Cool shot, but are you really saying he's taken the time to set up all these dominoes in his own home just for a cool logo art project? This is the stupidest waste of a hero's time since the crow squirted out a bunch of lighter fluid in the shape of a bird just so he could light it and look cool. Also, V apparently took overdramatic branding lessons from the Dark Knight. She looked at me right in the eyes. Didn't recognize me. Unlikely. The underground? I thought they closed this all down. They did. It took nearly ten years to clear the tracks lay a bit of my own. Because in addition to all the other shit I've been doing since I burned down Lark Hill, I'm also an amazing railroad engineer. Imagine finally getting to first base with Natalie Portman, and there's this stupid mask in the way. You still haven't kissed her. Not really. Even if her identity is the mask. I know he has some sort of bulletproof thing on anyway, but why aren't these other guys shooting him right now? V rips off the makeshift bulletproof vest thing from Marty in Back to the Future 3, who was actually ripping it off from Clint Eastwood. I don't want you to die. That's the most beautiful thing you could have ever 
given me. Well... This is cool and all, but how did they coordinate this? Like, did they all show up here at the exact same time? Did one guy leave his house several blocks ago, and that made the rest of them brave enough to suit up and join him along the way? Did V send instructions with the masks and robes? Or did all these people just get a look at the storyboards prior to filming? Movie tries to just gloss over how 110 pound Evie managed to pick up 200 pound V and carry him onto the train, but whatever. At this point, I just want to see Parliament explode. So in Batman Begins, we wanted Batman to stop the train because Ra's al Ghul wanted to blow up Wayne Enterprises and a corrupt Gotham. In this movie, we don't want the train to stop because V wants to blow up Parliament and a corrupt London. If Batman had shown up in this movie and told V you have to believe in the people of London, would V be the bad guy? Chew on that, movie revisionist. Movie's ending unintentionally inspires the ending of Les Miserables. Did Wes Anderson do this movie? Oh. Arrange a detail of six men and take her out behind the chemical shed and shoot her. There's a shortage of perfect breasts in this world. It would be a pity to damage yours. Look outside, Mummy. Look, Mummy. There's no plane up in the sky. That's all I have to say about that. And that's all I have to say about that. Any leads on finding this guy? Leads? Yeah, sure. They uh, got uh, four more detectives working on the case. They got us working in shifts. <laughs> Leads. <laughs> New and improved Joker product! That luscious tan, those ruby lips, and hair color so natural, only your undertaker knows for sure. <laughs> I know what you're saying! Ready? Yes. My name is Derek. <laughs> what are you doing? That's my name. Now that's done with, it's time to have a look at your face. The Yule Ball has been a tradition of the Triwizard Tournament since its inception. No. Oh. Place your right hand on my waist. What? My waist. Be sure next mealtime to ask for your free Septuwa Centennial Cupcake in a cup! Very strange time in my life.